bridge preparations this week have been disruptive with injuries. James Donaldson and Conrad Harrell both missing uh, for, for Sunday's game. Yeah, I think it were always going to be the case, Phil. I think given uh, the amount of time that we've had off and, and the limited preparation, uh, you know, the physical side of the game, the physical nature of the game, uh, always going to be a challenge to, to navigate these early weeks, I think, until the boys get back up and running and playing again. So we, we found there were a, a lot of sore bodies coming after uh, after the weekend. A fair few little niggles in there. Um, you know, when we spoke to other people, you know, within the game, I was speaking to Christian Wolf after their game last week. They picked a couple up in training, and talking to some guys in rugby union and football, I think it's been pretty common that um, there's not been, you know, not been one or two casualties around, you know, around those sort of injuries. So, uh, we, yeah, we sort of knew it would come in. We always said that it was going to be a test of our squad this year, and it'd be a, a different type of, of a team that won it this year in terms of. Uh, the congested season and the fixtures coming thick and fast and after the break and all that and yeah we, we've not come out of last week uh, unscathed and, and certainly picked a couple up. Donald's a bit differently mate obviously he's were a, a collision injury within the game but Conrad's is a bit of a hamstring and yeah it's fair to say we've had to manage well one or two circumstances throughout the week too. You've got a few options there at centre, Reece Evans and Alex Sutton coming to the squad. Yep. Um, what do those guys offer? Uh, well, I'll speak about them individually probably first. I think Alex Sutcliffe, probably a bit unfortunate not, not to get more time with us last year. I think Conrad's form and obviously the emergence of Harry has left him with two really good centres in front of him. Um, but Alex has formed with Featherstone during uh, the dual registration uh, championship competition last year. We were absolutely top draw. I saw him come up against some, uh, some really top performers that played championship last year in uh, Blokes like Anthony Gellin and Junior Sal, um, he covered himself with glory and a couple of instances when he played with them and had a terrific season and when he's had to step in for us uh, as a bench player a couple of times he's absolutely not let us down, you know, really impressive in the, in the friendlies pre-season and um, it will bring an energy and certainly a, a strength to our team as well. Uh, Reese, I think Reese is a slightly different in, in the terms of how he's landed here in his career, you know, with, at the start of the year Tommy uh, and Luke were down injured, we just a little bit thin on three quarters and I guess we look for a money ball signing to, to shore up and give us some strength in depth and, and for Reese, a player that's played you know, a lot of Super League, uh, played in Grand Finals, Challenge Cup Finals, played a lot of international games and he's just a kid who, oh, pro probably a move from Warrington, didn't work out for him and he had a couple of years where I guess with some injuries, you know, a difficult situation he had at Lee at the time, uh, and I just felt that Reese would give us experience cover. It certainly helped the boys train. It was a chance for him to invest in himself as a full-time player again. You know, we give him that opportunity to come, you know, come into our camp and uh, almost get a little bit of a smile back on his face. Really, you know, he's enjoyed his time here, and, and while he knew the situation where he sat in the pecking order, you know, we all know. Oh, oh, Always sort of knew at some point a chance had come for him, and, and perhaps that chance might come for him this weekend. And you know, I know Reese won't let us down when that chance uh, and wherever it comes may be. St Helens, you spoke in the week of, about how you thought that the break had done them good. They they came fire against Catalans. Uh, what sort of threats do you think they're going to pose on Sunday? Uh, yeah, I don't mind saying this really. I think we were due to playing before the COVID break. They had uh, a massive season last year, made, made all the finals, obviously won the comp, number of tourists, you know, some post-season surgeries. Obviously that left Wolfie with a, a short amount of time as a new coach, I guess, to get to know his players. Um, and some injuries at the start of the year, they looked like a team that just, just quite weren't firing on all cylinders and, and the Saints that we know. Uh, the last game before the break, they played Castleford and uh, you know got, got well beaten in that game. Uh, and I think privately behind the scenes, we thought that they were a team that would benefit from the rest, getting everybody uh, back from the injuries and uh, give everybody just a little bit of a, a mental refresh as well, I guess, because, you know, re relentless football and relentless football at the top end not only have a physical impact on your team, but probably a mental one too. And I thought the way they come out last week were brilliant, really. As, as we know with Saints, they can play, uh, play at un unbelievable speed to the game. I guess the rules, again, given 
Uh, given the type of personnel they've got, makes them a, a really big challenge. You know, the way that they crash out of backfield with uh, with their outside backs, paving way, paving the way for you know, some really strong ball carriers up front. Great half backs. You know, Johnny Lomax is a tremendous player on that left edge, and, and Lachlan Coo certainly got the ability to make you know big plays out of nothing really. So we, we know the size of the challenge, but I say. Uh, one or two injuries in but I don't see that too much as a negative for us I think it's going to bring us uh, a real positive energy to our team James Graham something you know well uh, what do you think he's going to add to, to this Saints side obviously coming for Luke Thompson yeah well, obviously Jam has been around the traps a long time had a, had a wonderful career both in the UK and, and then subsequently in the NRL obviously I were at St George for a year the first year that, that Jammer went in there and uh, just his presence he's, he's got a real ability you know people talk about leaders um, in actions you would struggle to find a, a, a greater leader than James just the little things that he does in training the way he competes uh, how vocal he is, how hard he works. He's very good at, at getting guys on board with him and, and recruiting them. He's probably in the twilight of his, his career you know, from a physical perspective, but he'll still play the game really tough, hard up front, be very vocal out there. And I think for him to come over here, you know, at this stage of his career, will not only give him a, you know, a, an added boost and an extra incentive to finish really strong, but also uh, while well, losing a, a fantastic player in Luke, Tom, in Luke Thompson. ourselves feeling good in the break we, we, we come back in in good spirits we train really well and then all of a sudden uh, you come up again a team that have been traveling well themselves uh, and the analogy you use like a boxing match they smacked us in the face first and, and it just rattled us about and took us a little bit of time to get over that I think uh, they did the basics really well completed the sets kicked a chase left us in some field positions but I think penalty count errors six against heavily heavily went against us last week I think penalty count was 10-4 at one stage six against with 5-2 and we we shot ourselves in the foot with some poor errors some of those errors come you know, around the 25 minute mark when I felt while as defensive effort were pretty good uh, the, the weight uh, the amount that we had to do were, were an issue for us but I thought it really impacted us with the ball I thought we lost our way and lost our shape from that sort of 25 minute period right up to half time great thing about our guys is I think we learn lessons really quickly uh, we're always confident at half time if we could get some momentum uh, we were capable of putting points on putting points on quickly and I think that showed once we got a couple of penalties and, and six against you know we, we look like we were very very dangerous in, in that last part of the game however you know we do know that you can't you can't give teams stats like that it, it were a miraculous comeback but we know we've got to be better in those first first parts of the game it's going to be a relentless pace to the game tomorrow uh, we say Saints have got an ability to back you up play really quick so we need to be ready energy wise and ready physically uh, but also you know we, we totally understand we've got to be a lot tidier with the ball um, and make Saints have to defend us in a, in a better way than we did our opposition last week and just finally, away from the game, uh, announced yesterday that Liam Tindall agreed a new three-year deal. The 18-year-old. How impressed have you been with him in training since since come back from lockdown? Super impressed. Uh, he's a tremendous young athlete. When we had a look around as academy, obviously we were continuously looking at succession plans. We we think we've a fairly young squad anyway. We think we've we've a great crop of emerging talent. Outside backs in the squad at the moment. Alex Hooker, we're talking about tomorrow. We've got Corey Hall and Jack Broadbent too. Um, but looking at Liam, we've probably earmarked him for a while. Obviously, he's been an England junior rep. He has um, he's played consistently well through scholarship and academy. And we had a reserve grade game earlier this year where we played Wigan, and, and Wigan had a you know a very physical team. They had a number of first graders in there, and as you always do get a uh, a tough contest again, Wigan. You know, Liam really impressed us in that, in the way he carried the ball out of backfield, his athleticism, his strength. Uh, you know, he's a really tough kid. And it was at that point really that we spoke to Kevin and said, look, as soon as he, he gets cleared in terms of his education uh, and he's free to join us, we thought, you know, rather than waiting until next year to bring him in this squad, if he were free and available, 
uh, then we would bring him in this year to give him a head start. Uh, he's really impressed us in training, he's impressed the boys. Um, you know, keep going back to that. He's, he's a tremendous physical specimen. He's still still quite raw as a, as a rugby league player. I think there's plenty of uh, plenty of building blocks we can put on him in that department. Um, but yeah, he's, he's impressed us, and you know, he's a type of kid already that if we feel if we had to if we had to use him in first grade, we're sure that he could handle it from a, a physical point of view.